Hey guys, what's going on? I'm joined with Jeremy James Prutchik, a fellow Jurassic Park YouTuber. Jeremy, go ahead and let him know you're here. Hi guys, uh, it's great to be here. Thanks for having me, Clayton. Yeah, man, it's going to be awesome. So today we're going to be talking about what Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom means for the future of this franchise. With the destruction of Isla Nublar and the development of the series going down a path that is devoid of both dinosaur theme parks as well as isolated islands, uh, we're, we're basically going to be talking about what can we expect from this series in the future. Now, I'm going to start with you, Jeremy. What do you think Fallen Kingdom will ultimately mean for the story progression of the Jurassic franchise? No more islands, no more parks. Where are we going? Well, I think where we're going with this series is, from what we've gathered in the trailers and such, I feel like the movie's going to be going down a much darker path than what we've seen before. And mm -hmm. in particular... I think it's taking the series and putting it in a whole new environment. Because like you said, no more islands, no more parks. I think we're basically, we're taking the dinosaurs and all the animals and sticking them into our world now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So since we're sticking the dinosaurs into our world, I think there's a lot that you can potentially do with this in terms of story. I think you've made a really good point that it's taking it to a new area. It's taking it out of the, you know, out of what we've seen before, down a darker path, down something more, I don't want to say relatable. I guess I would probably say just different to what we've seen for the previous four movies. If you go back, you know, ever since the first film, the setting and environment and almost plot structure of the Jurassic Park films have been eerily similar to one another. I mean, you get some differences with Lost World and most certainly differences with Jurassic World uh, when we start uh, talking about hybrids and stuff like that. Right. But, you know, they all have a tropical setting, uh, with the exception of Lost World, which is kind of tropical slash redwood forest. Yeah. Still, still jungle, right? Yeah. Like, still foresty. But they all have that setting. They all surround problems with control where these dinosaurs just end up getting loose and people are on the island stuck and they have no power and they must face these primal beasts that are all over the place so i feel like you, you kind of have to take them off the island now and you have to put them in a different backdrop for them to run around in and and do stuff in because not that i don't like the tropical setting but i feel like after you see it so many times it, uh, it'll either lose its luster or it won't be, quote unquote, as special as it used to be. Uh, what, do, what do you think? Do you think I'm making sense here? Oh, yeah, that's a really good point that you have. Well, I think that since we're taking the dinosaurs and putting them into sort of our world instead of having it on, a, on, a, on an island somewhere, you know, we've seen in the movies how, you know, humanity's defenseless against the dinosaurs. You know, they're at their mercy in their mm -hmm. homeland. But it'd be interesting to see how it would be would we be still be would we still be at their mercy in our homeland because you know we have all the technology we have the weapons we have the science but i still feel the dinosaurs are going to be a big problem when they come to our world right and i think i think they kind of have to be for it to still be jurassic park you know uh, like Trevorrow stated a while back, he, he stated like it's not always going to be about an island and a park messing up it's far away from the mainland. Eventually, we're going to move it into where there's dinosaurs in jungles around the world. And it's like, hey, don't go in that jungle. Uh, there's not tigers in there. There's dinosaurs. <laughs> so I, I love that idea. And I, I think that the one thing that people are kind of apprehensive at you know, following through with that is they don't want to see planet of the dinosaurs. If you know what I mean, I can understand like, where, where people would come from, from that. I, I agree. Yeah. I'm not so sure that that would work. I, yeah, I don't, not to the, not to the point where the series, let's say the series ends with humanity becoming extinct and dinosaurs taking over again. I think that's a little too extreme. Yeah. That's, that's way too far, but I could see, like, I wouldn't be against necessarily seeing that dinosaurs sort of becoming more of a, a bigger presence in the world. Not to mm -hmm. the point where, not to the point where it's like Planet of the Dinosaurs, no. Enough to the point where it's like, oh my god, like, we really shot ourselves in the foot with this one. Yeah, I love that idea because I think it could be something like a... You know how in the, the Dinotopia stories where people are coexisting with dinosaurs? Yeah. Well, what if we have something to where, yeah, we coexist with some of them. We have them like on a ranch or something. But the other ones are like invasive species. Right. Like, like raptors and we, such. 
Yeah, raptors, or even like, let's say a herd of uh, parasaurs, parasaurolophus are just like walking through your field, you're a farmer, and all of a sudden all your agma beans and soybeans are gone. Yeah. Like, because they just eat them all, and you can't do anything about it. I mean, you just look outside and you're like, well. Damn it. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) It's like, that sucks. And then if you, especially when you talk about man's control over animals today, you know, uh, we have a hard time for uh, people in Africa that are trying to quarrel around the vicious animals that live there, which are, they're the most vicious beasts on the planet for the most part where people live. I mean, you've got lions, elephants, hippopotamus, Yep. you know, may- maybe not. Okay. Maybe I shouldn't use the word vicious for all of them, but they are very big problems. They're, like They can be dangerous. Of, yeah, totally. And I think that, you know, when someone has to go out and kill a rogue elephant, that's like, started to destroy a village or something or a lion yeah. that's not an easy task no like that we still have problems doing that not i mean we have weapons to we can do it i mean roland timbo used the nitro express rounds in his elephant gun yeah elephant but, gun hence the name yeah ex- exactly but it's like th- that's not an easy task you don't just go out every day and see an elephant and shoot it one time and it falls and you're done and you can go back to your farm and if, if we can't do that today where the animals are going wherever they want to, the biggest problems we have is like a couple ton mammalians, <laughs> uh, then what do you think a triceratops would do? Like, this is some serious stuff that I don't think people would be ready for. Exactly. I mean, of, of course we could kill them, but... The damage I mean, would already you... be done. The more damage that these dinosaurs cause, I feel that it, the harder and harder it'll be for humanity to rebuild, basically. Yeah, that's what I, and that's, I think, an important part. I'm not sure, so sure that humanity would fall, like Planet of the Apes style, but no. I think it would, it would be hit. Yeah, like, uh, we'd, we'd be, I'm not saying we go back to the Stone Age, but uh, it, our te- our, I don't think they'd be thriving as much as we are today. Yeah, I agree. Progress would be, like, inhibited. Yes, uh, and I just remember, like, I think about Malcolm's quote from the Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom trailer. These creatures were here before us, and if we're not careful, they're going to be here after us. So I kind of feel that, I feel the movie's hinting at that kind of event, you know, going in that direction. Mm-hmm. I hope so. Yeah, like, like I said, not to the point of Planet of the Dinosaurs, but enough where, you know, humanity and dinosaurs are, they struggle to coexist. And I, yeah, and I think that's actually something that was set up back in the first Jurassic Park novel. They never kind of continued. If you remember at the end of the first novel uh, where Alan Grant and everyone else is in Costa Rica detained, like they can't go home. Yeah. Or right. like Marty, uh, Mar- Martin Gutierrez goes up and he's like, yeah, there's some animals that are actually eating lysine enriched crops on the mainland. Yes, I remember that. And so it's like... They never followed up with the, the dinosaurs are already off the island in the very first Jurassic Park story. Yeah. They've, they've broken off. So now the question is, how do we deal with this mistake that we made like 25 years ago? And it's going to have repercussions and ripples in the water, so to speak, all the way up to now. Right. And I think that that's that's where I think we need to take the story further because uh, and I'm not going to knock the whole franchise like it. It's uh, we should have done it a long time ago, but in my opinion, it is long overdue. Right, and I think that's why they introduced things like the dinosaur protection site to kind of give us more story to it. Because one could argue the message that you know we created these dinosaurs, we t- we chose to do it, we have a responsibility to them. You know, they need to be given the same kind of rights that other animals have. Right. Right. On the yeah. other side, people would say, we made a mistake cloning these animals. Uh, look at the damage that's been done because of these things. We need to basically go back to a clean slate. Yeah, that would be the Malcolm approach, I would, <laughs> I would I assume. I think so. I think, that, <laughs> I think Malcolm, he does know that it's going to be a problem, that if you guys don't do anything, they're going to basically overtake us. Mm-hmm. So I think, I, that, uh, yeah, I think that I think Malcolm would be on the side of, you know, killing them off i think maybe probably but i'm not so sure that you know it's so funny in the lost world he was so hesitant to do anything until he learned that sarah was already on the island yes so it's kind of ironic that he had to like he had to go back at that point Mm -hmm. but it's funny that and this is what i've actually wanted to see for a while is you know they had an issue 
of creating scripts for Jurassic Park 4 and and things in between because they didn't know how they were going to get people back on the island. And I think that, hey, I mean, just bring the dinosaurs to the people. If you can't bring the people to the dinosaurs, that's that's the way. Like, that's the only feasible way to do it in the future is just to say, look, because no one would go back to those islands. Like, let's be legit. What like, reason there would was, there be? Yeah, there would be no reason anymore. But if you bring them in their backyard, so to speak, oh, my God, can you think of the possibilities? Dr. Grant's coming back. Dr. Malcolm's oh, coming back. Oh, that'd be back. awesome. Yeah, Dr. Sattler, like, now you're opening the door to bring everything full circle and make a meaning out of the T-Rex roaring at the end of the first movie where the banner falls down that says, when dinosaurs ruled the Earth. Right. You could actually do this. You know what I mean? That's just personally how I see it. I, that's how I think that we, we kind of need to go forward with two, technically three, failed theme parks, if you count uh, Jurassic Park San Diego. Yeah, that's true. Uh, you know... <laughs> They're not going to build another one. <laughs> no, I think I think building theme parks has been it's been done enough. We've already we get the idea that it's not going to work. There's lots of problems mm-hmm. with doing so. You know, we've seen it in the first movie. We, we've seen it in uh, the Lost World, Jurassic World. So I do think it's time to take the series in a new direction like that. Yeah, and I think that you don't want the the park concept to become like the Death Star. Like in Star Wars, to where like they just keep building one. Oh right, right. Like, like it's gonna work. No, nope, nope, it's not gonna work. <laughs> so I'm gonna ask you another question. Sure. What do you think with taking all of the stuff off the islands? Uh, no more parks. No more islands. None of that stuff. We're we're going in the future. What are some good environments that you think we could drop the dinosaurs into? have a visually different film series than what we've seen before. Maybe not so much palm trees, uh, put them in any other environment. Like what, what would you like to see for the future, uh, setting to be for Jurassic park films? That would, that's a really good question because if we're not going to do on the islands, we got to think of what would be a suitable habitat. And the first thing I think of is a place, obviously a place where they can roam free, like, big open space like let's say mm. let's say the savanna just for the sake of conversation let's say that there's africa one, yeah yeah the african savanna oh i'd love that that sounds awesome <laughs> like because once upon a time millions of years ago that actually happened right yeah so it's kind of like it's like the dinosaurs you know home world meshing with ours um and it's and it'd be sharing they'd have animals to hunt like you know if, uh let's say the spinosaurus is in africa and decides to Go after a giraffe or something. That would be an interesting thing. I've actually always wanted to see like a raptor pack take down a lion. That would be cool. I don't, uh, yeah, I don't know why. I just, to me, having natural modern creatures deal with other species just walking up into their habitats. And I mean, let's, let's be honest, they, they would lay waste. Yeah, to they all would. That we have today. <laughs> like even an elephant so, wouldn't stand a chance against a T Rex, I don't think. No, oh no, it'd be Valley of Guanji. It'd be yeah. bad. <laughs> I would really love to see that, though, personally, because you brought up Africa. Africa has a different look than the islands that we've been on so far. It's more tan. Yeah. It's more brown, you could say. But it's also got a lot of tall grass. It's got a lot of the... Uh, it, it's got an environment... Like, if you could take uh, Pride Rock like Lion King style okay. uh, Africa yeah. and drop some dinosaurs in there in a real world situation. And people, you know, there, there are people that live in Africa that are going to have to deal with that stuff that can you imagine how terrifying that would be? They already have to deal with elephants and lions and stuff. Yeah. yeah they'd be pretty screwed with, like, if they had to deal with all of these dinosaurs, you know, that's just something. How do you deal with that? Yeah, exactly. It would be so cool by the way, to see like safaris, like uh, with, hunters and uh native tribesmen and stuff like that you know how they usually get together for like a a safari to like show rich people like hey there's an animal over here that you can go uh in a canned hunt on yeah it'd be crazy if they had like just tons of safari vehicles out there just going after uh whatever it may be like a, a herd of triceratops or a tyrannosaurus that's you know about to go to the village and they're trying to like lead it away or something yeah that just sounds awesome to me and i remember i would love to see that i remember in the lost world novel i think dodgson was saying something along those lines that could you imagine if someone can say that they hunted a tyrannosaurus yeah yeah 
That's what uh, sparked the character for Roland Timbo, who, of course, doesn't have any equivalent in the book. Right. But, uh, but hey, I mean, great line, made one of the greatest characters in the series. <laughs> mm-hmm. And it's realistic, because you know there would be a pool, there would be a motivation for people to be like, I could hunt a T-Rex. Like... What? Holy shit. I, yeah, not just an elephant. Like, not just, you know, insert whatever animal here, a T-Rex. You don't get higher than T-Rex. And then you have some people learning about the Spinosaurus and other things. And you could, oh, God, there's going to be this whole, you know, slew of people going in and getting killed. Yeah. And that's that's what would be really, I think that would be an interesting story that I would love to see. Because, and if you, and if you do something like that, if you said it in Africa, you could bring back Nick Van Owen. You could bring back uh, similar characters to Robert Muldoon and Roland Timbo. You obviously can't bring the actors back. Right. But you could you know, create new characters, so to speak. Yeah. And, uh, it, and what's so interesting about not doing it on the tropical islands anymore too, is w- technically we could take them anywhere. If we wanted to, we could get a Jurassic park movie in the freaking snow <laughs> some way, somehow it would be difficult because obviously they can't live in an environment like that. But I could see the pull of a director wanting to go, okay, we're going to have a Triceratops like run into a Jeep and like throw it into the snow hill. Oh, that'd be and, awesome. Yeah, because you could see like the uh, the imagery of just bloody snow with a dinosaur would that that's that's scary. That would be a, what Alien versus Predator probably should have been. <laughs> I mean, you could you could get all kinds of stuff in the snow in a mountain area like Japan, like Mount Fuji would be an interesting setting for a Jurassic Park film or yeah. uh Africa, California redwoods, I don't know, Rocky Mountains. No, not the Rocky. Just like a nature preserve sort of setting, I think. Yeah, oh, uh like Yellowstone Park or something. Yeah, 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 that all, was all the all the geysers that they've got shooting up. Yeah. And you could you could really do something that has never been done before setting a, a velociraptor pack hunting kangaroos in australia that was just that sounds was so interesting cool. just so, we've never seen that before no <laughs> um and then of course eventually you know there's going to be the pull to do dinosaurs in suburban areas or even cities uh like we had in the lost world yeah that uh, i'm kind if, of uh, uh, yeah if they if they do it again they got to be careful yeah because I like the ending of The Lost World. But I do, I don't, too. I don't think you could just do that again without people going like, okay, we've seen this. Yeah. You like, know what I mean? It's got to offer something new. Yeah. So, I mean, maybe here's the thing. And they did a lot with that T-Rex at the end of The Lost World. Like, they destroyed a bus, a blockbuster. He that destroyed blockbuster. Like, uh, yeah. <laughs> he destroyed, like, all kinds of stuff. He ate someone in front of a Starbucks. Yeah. I mean, so... You got to wonder if they're going to take it into an urban environment. Uh, first of all, they, they can't go the, I would say the San Diego route would be the Godzilla route. Yeah. I think that they should probably go the more Resident Evil, like zombie outbreak route with like raptors or something. Yeah. Cause you don't want it to be like, a, you don't want it to be a monster movie. Yeah. Because you know, and, and it would kind of defeat the purpose if you're like, okay, we're getting them off of the Island so that we won't be too similar to the previous four films. And then you go and copy the ending of the lost world. So yeah. It's like, Oh, okay. Well, that, why did you do that? Uh, you know what I mean? So, uh, but I do think there is a lot of opportunities and possibilities uh, for not only the visual differences and settings that we're going to be dropping these animals in, but like I said at the beginning, the story. We've never seen the story progress outside of the islands. We've never seen the con- uh, containment breach that severe. And I I want to. I've, I've wanted to for a long time because I think it's something that, I mean, to really hammer that the whole point of Jurassic Park Home is a it's a cautionary tale. It's a warning against genetic manipulation and the thought of having control over something as giant as nature without having any understanding of what you're dealing with. Exactly. It's, and it's it, it's like what Malcolm said. Yeah, it's exactly like what he said, and they need to follow through with that in future installments because it won't be like My- Malcolm said if people just keep going back to the island. Like, it's their fault, you know, at that point. <laughs> it's, yeah. It's not It's not Hammond's, you know, and I hate to say it, but it, they, they, they kind of need to hammer in. Like, John Hammond's vision was not, uh, was not exactly... Flawless. Go- yeah, flawless. See, he had a lot of... 
uh, mistakes in what he was doing. Not so he wasn't a bad man no. by any means. I just think oh, he had oh. his head in the clouds and didn't realize the implications of what he was doing. Yeah, and they they need to hammer that home. And I think the only way to do that from now going forward, get the dinosaurs off the island, make it so that we can't go back to the islands, and give us the full circle thing of what Jurassic Park was supposed to be. Uh, you know, way back at the beginning. Like I said in the novel, they're already off the island, man. They're, right. they're already causing tr- trouble. And then in the end of Jurassic Park, you know, I think that it's pretty symbolic of the dinosaurs having taken back control uh, from their masters, so to speak. And now they're running free on this island. So, I mean, can we really stop an invasive species like that? I mean, with however many bullets you've got. And number one, it doesn't all come down to firearms. I mean, it comes down to several different things. I mean, rule number one, cardio. Yeah. (laughs) yeah. (laughs) You better be fit if you're trying to take on stuff like this. But other than that, I mean, not everybody in the world is going to be fit. Not everybody in the world knows how to handle a weapon. Right. This is a serious thing. Like, if this were to actually happen, I think Jurassic Park would excel in being a cautionary thing of, shit, no one's prepared. You know what I mean? I'm reminded, actually, I was doing some research on uh, the iterations in the Jurassic Park novel. And oh, uh, yes. iteration number six is what comes to mind. Uh, system recovery may prove impossible. Mm. Like, and, you think yeah. of how all these animals are thriving. And like you said, it, it, bullets aren't going to be the main... Dis- like, like you said, it's not all about bullets. You know, nature's uh, not a very yeah. powerful weapon on its side. It, just nature itself... And I think that's the main point is the fact that, yeah, uh, a weapon is very useful, but at the end of the day, it's just a tool. I mean, Robert Muldoon in the first Jurassic Park, putting his hat down, you know, unfolding the stock of a Spaz-12, getting ready to blow this raptor's face off. He didn't know anything about the fucking velociraptor behavior. He should have. That's that's the thing. It's it's, (laughs) someone like Muldoon didn't know that. That's kind of like, oh, my God, like, come on. It's. His ignorance, man. He just, he's like, all right, I'm in control. I'm hunting you, not the other. Oh, it's right in front of my face. You know, it's that clever girl moment that, you know, you think that's only going to happen one time? No. Not to say that people won't plan ahead. Some people will. Yeah. People that are intelligent enough to figure out, hey, uh, we're dealing with something severe here. We need more than just oodles of bullets. We're going to need a formulate. We're going to need to formulate a plan to try and work around these things because look at jurassic world um all those guys had lots of people lots of guns and they were still picked off by the raptor squad one by one yeah and even on top of that when owen kept telling them he was like just like you got an m134 in your armory put it on a chopper and smoke this thing yeah he's telling them to like you know he he told them to, to put that thing on the chopper Go out there and kill it, and that was the most intelligent that, <laughs> offer. That's of, the only way you could stop it. <laughs> yeah, and there, and of course, you know, in a Jurassic Park situation, which makes sense, by the way, the corporation's like, look, we've got like millions of dollars invested in that thing. We can't just kill it. But at that point, it's like, look, kill it. You're going to save lives. You're going to do it. You're going to save they go your out company. There and do it. Yeah, exactly. When they go out and do it, of course, it doesn't work. Right. But it's the most intelligent thing that you could do and you know they don't just go after him in a jeep with that freaking gun they went in a helicopter yeah so it makes sense you know they're making good ideas it's just that not all of humanity is going to be that smart (laughs) with dealing with stuff like this right so i mean let's say you're a farmer and you're farming your beans and you're out there you've got your shotgun or rifle or whatever have you a 30 30 who cares you're just there to kill coyotes and make sure that nothing's going to impede on your little farmland Uh uh-oh here comes a brachiosaurus yeah shit (laughs) you know uh what do you do there's nothing you really can do uh looks like you're out of business looks like you just need to kind of sit back and don't get stepped on if you call someone in who has like a rocket launcher or something yeah that would work okay yeah you could kill the dinosaur but then what i mean you you got one you got its carcass on your on your property i I remember you saying something like that in one of your videos like now you got to deal with the cleanup yeah, or, I mean, let's let's say you can't get the dinosaur up before, like, a scavenger or another predator, like, smells the dead body. Yeah. Like, what are you going to do? Like, okay. Well, then you got another you problem can, on your hands. Yeah, I hope you got extra rockets. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, that's just going to be a never-ending issue for you to, like, do. People don't think this far ahead, though. They're just like, oh, we could kill them. 
well, yeah, we could do that. But then what? <laughs> you know, like, what now, asshole? <laughs> it's, uh, it's a big issue that I don't think that people in the Jurassic Park universe would really. And I'd love to see a debate with that go down like Owen Grady who does know the animals and who knows weapons who would be able to be like okay he served in the navy yeah he should he should know he should have a, a leg up on other people who are just like yeah I'm going to get him man I'm going to take the fight to th- oh like uh, yeah. what's his name from aliens uh Bill Paxton's character oh yeah Hudson I forget his name Hudson, yeah, Hudson, Hudson from Aliens, where he's just, you know, he's the ultimate badass. He's going to kill all of them. And then he, he's a fucking pussy he's in real, reality. Chicks. Yeah, he can't do anything after all his weapons and shit are taken away. And his uh, helicopter and car, he's like, game over, man. Oh. <laughs> That's when you got to wait for Kyle Reese to step up. Yeah. And like, shut up. We've got to, we we're going to formulate a plan to work with this. So uh, that's what I want to see in the future is people actually formulating intelligent strategies to take out these dinosaurs because there is an issue with you know uh you could say that sometimes the guns tend to not work in jurassic park films which is right right i i could i could see that being a valuable complaint and one thing that uh on a side note i think they do need to do before this series is over people say hey we don't want the series to turn into a shoot 'em up of uh dinosaurs and i agree yeah but that's never happened yet. You know, we've never gotten a scene similar to the beginning of Aliens where they're all just shooting the aliens, which, you know, insert raptors here yeah, so that's... that it's not a major issue. You know, just they're shooting up raptors, whatever. But we've never had the the humans, except for the roundup scene in The Lost World, which, again, they weren't killing anything. But they, they never had a one-up on the dinosaurs. And in, in The Lost World, it made sense because... They have weapons, but they don't really. They didn't plan on like losing all of their equipment and shit. They were just. Yeah. They weren't here to like. They weren't technically an army. They were like a gathering squad. Yeah. So they weren't really that prepared. Even though Roland and Ajay had some very good weapons, the other people had you know whatever. They had some HKs and stuff, but they didn't prove very effective against the T Rexes. So. And look at Jurassic World. Um, they had all those like high-tech military weapons and they didn't do shit against the indominus rex they were able to kill one of the raptors and he was charlie with the rocket launcher they were oh able, yeah they blew him away they were able yeah. to do that but th- i think that one was just a lucky shot maybe well yeah plus he was just standing still yeah so, so. easy target right there right yeah and then the other guy shot the uh, Dimorphodon in the helicopter yes, yes. when they were flying to the island that, i like, love that shot by yeah the way. i love that little right on of right right there <laughs> But even like even though they have high tech weapons, it doesn't give humanity a step up necessarily above dinosaurs because you got to shoot the thing, you got to know how to use it, and if you don't know how to use it, and if you don't know how to shoot it, then you're going to get your ass kicked. Right. Well, and this is a difference between like military grade weapons and as well as civilian know how with something like hunting. They're totally different things. You'd be surprised how much more powerful some of the hunting rounds could be. It's a totally different type of caliber. And I think that when you're going up against dinosaurs and you've got some AK-47 or something, you're shooting at the foot of a triceratops, I mean, okay. (laughs) You're not going to win that battle. (laughs) I just wish that people... And it's maybe I'm complaining a little bit too much, but they're going to need to learn in the Jurassic Park situation if they want to survive. Absolutely. But at the same time, you can't just be, I've got a pistol. I'm taking on this Tyrannosaur. <laughs> it's <laughs> like, dude, what the hell? <laughs> Are you nuts? So, yeah, it's like, it's not that simple, man. And I think that's another important thing for the franchise to go forward. We've never seen the humans really get a massive leg up like the Raptors are retreating like we've got it. You know, they, they've got the situation under control for like however it may be, maybe three seconds. It doesn't matter. We haven't seen that yet. And we also haven't seen the dinosaurs invade people's spaces, you know, without them really knowing. They're just like, oh, shit, they're here. Yeah. Look at this thing. This thing's just staring at me like I'm in my house washing dishes. I look outside and there's a Carnotaurus like, <laughs> staring me in the face. And you can only call the National Guard, like, the National Guard would be called so much, they wouldn't be able to be dispersed at so many locations at once. Yeah, I, I made that point in a, the same video that we referenced earlier, is the fact that this is, that would be a serious issue. 
you, you can kill them, you can drop them, and you got a whole other slew of issues. Then you got the cleanup, you've got maybe this is going to potentially attract other carnivorous dinosaurs. What if you don't have enough ammunition? What if you are with someone who you trust to like save your life and you give them a firearm and they don't know shit? Like they don't know, they've never done this. You know, guns getting jammed up like Alan Grant in Jurassic Park to where he just has to throw the shotgun away and climb up in the uh, ventilation ducts. Oh, yeah, so yeah. It's like, Man, this is you gotta you gotta wonder. It's like, uh, yeah, not everyone is going to have the best idea of what to do in situations like this. So, you know, you could be dealing with all kinds of stuff in this situation. You could be bringing back characters, introducing them to new environments. You could be having totally different scenarios of human and dinosaur interaction that would be both beneficial for the franchise as well as fresh, entertaining. And hopefully intelligent. And I think that that's, that's probably the biggest point is I, I don't want it to turn into Carnosaur. Oh, I never saw that, um, but I heard it was like a, it was like a B movie, wasn't it? Yeah. It, if you've never seen it, you don't, you have no reason to watch it. So okay. <laughs> don't watch it. I won't that's watch it. I don't think that this is a bad thing. I think getting rid of the islands and the parks, this is what we need to do. And it's kind of something that we should have done a long time ago. And they mentioned personally. it in the, they mentioned it in the trailer actually. Uh, one of the there's a man that mentioned the trailer uh, uh, Jurassic World, the islands, it's all in the past now. Yeah, I, I remember that uh, Rafe Spall's character uh, and they're doing the dinosaur auctions too. Yeah. Which means that if all these people let's say a select few people buy some dinosaurs and they take them home with them, mm-hmm. like someone at that auction's like I want a T-Rex. <laughs> and, you know, they're like, all right, here's the T-Rex. Here, Pay me the money. All right, take it home. You know that T-Rex, those people probably aren't going to know how to handle it exactly. No, or, yeah, any so, dinosaur for that matter. Oh, exactly. And, like, Gallimimus. You know, one day Gallimimus in the backyard, wake up next day, it's gone. Yeah. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> so, I mean, like, I want to see that to where there's been dinosaurs that have been auctioned off and displayed all over the world. Yes. We don't know what's out there. Like, they're just, they're there, man. They're, and they're destroying property and they're eating stuff because, and they're not evil for it. It's no. just what they are. They're, they do what they do. And I you wonder I mean? if there's like, um, sort of like a black market for those kinds of auctions. I'm sure there's some companies out there that do like, you know, under the table stuff. Yeah, of course. And it'd be interesting to also see like if someone wants uh, the horns of a triceratops or something. Yeah. That's just kind of how I feel about it. I think that this is a good thing for the franchise. I Not that I don't ever want to go back to like Isla Sorna or something, but it's like, you know, if you go back, make sure it makes sense. Yeah, make sure there's make a good sure. reason. Yeah, and I, because we talk, uh, we've talked in the past, I believe, on how there's six movies in the can that they plan on making. They plan on making one more after Fallen Kingdom. Right. And then the rights expire. So So they they could buy them back, though. I'm pretty sure the Crichton estate would be fine with reselling them to Spielberg and Amlin because they were really good friends. Yeah. But if uh, if you do more, do it tastefully. Yes. You know, don't just keep churning them out. Like, there's Jurassic Park movie every year, sometimes three times a year. No, I don't want that. I love Jurassic yeah. Park, don't get me wrong, but that would just, it would, I think it would just, it wouldn't be the same. Take, yeah, it'd take away from what makes it special, I think. Like, part of why I love Jurassic World so much is because of the 14-year wait that we had for that movie. Yeah, I agree. It, it really exceeded my expectations by a lot. I went into that movie thinking like, man, if this is like a three out of five mediocre okay thing, I will be very pleased. And I was blown away. I was like, oh my God, a this coherent plot. I personally think it's the second best movie in the series. I've teetered back and forth to whether I like Lost World or Jurassic World better. I think Lost World probably has more obvious flaws than Jurassic World. Right. But I think personally I might like the Lost World better. Okay. I don't know. that They're both really good films. Yeah, I think the Jurassic right. World worked its ass off on, on being... Uh, I, I don't know how you could put it, but on being worthy of holding that name. I think some people kind of beat it up and kick it, but I, I the the film's success and the film's critical analysis alone say, hey man, like it's not it's bad. not just a dinosaur B movie. No, it's well above that. In fact, there's a lot of meta commentary on that subject. Uh, specifically speaking, they went out of their way to say like we're not a B movie and made fun of that. I I love that aspect of it. I thought it was great, and I I want them to continue being great because if they're not. 
I just I never want to have a sour taste in my mouth where I'm like, man, I don't want to go see the new Jurassic World movie. Yeah, we already had uh, some, if, we already had that setback with Jurassic Park three. I just feel that, that uh, people would appreciate the movies more if when there's a large gap of time between movies. Like look at look at Jurassic World, fourteen years, and Jurassic World: Fallen Kingdom, about three years. You know, not as long as fourteen, but enough. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. Um, and I think that's good too. They need like a few years to formulate the good, perfect story to put right next. The next chapter needs to be well thought out, in yes. my opinion. You know, um, another thing that we could talk about real quick is thematically speaking. There have been some concerns over some people who have claimed that the Jurassic World franchise feels less like Jurassic Park and more like Transformers Hmm. Um, in terms of, uh, you know, here's your big budgeted blockbuster uh, thing with no brain. I do not think that that's a very good argument. No. But I I, I want to talk about that, though, real quick, uh, about furthering the franchise so that that never happens. And uh, what here's what I think. Jurassic World feels more like I feel like it's still Jurassic Park mm-hmm. but there is a shift there's a tonal shift but I don't think it's in the vein of Transformers I would say it's much more Indiana Jones okay personally. That, that's that's where I think the Owen Grady character arc because you know we've never followed one character throughout the original trilogy no it was either Alan Grant and Malcolm or or you get Grant, or you get Malcolm, and Dr. Sattler can be there, but not that long. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So, actually focusing on Claire and Owen, and for that matter, Blue the Velociraptor. Yes. Uh, if you if you dedicate to it, if you try to flesh out those characters, and if you try to take them into new places and work on who they are as people, which Jurassic Park, man, that, that trilogy always kind of shied away from, uh, especially in regards to uh, romance scenes, uh Every one of the original trilogy cut away any type of, uh, what should I say, like embrace between a man and a woman. Yeah. They cut so. scenes out of Jurassic Park of Grant and Ellie. Yeah. Like Why? They, they were a couple, they just did. but they didn't really build up on that. Uh, Lost World, Kelly tells Ian to marry Sarah Hardy. Yeah, I remember that. And they, they cut that out of the film. And then in Jurassic Park 3, at the end of that film... Uh, Amanda and Paul Kirby were supposed to get back together and like have this admittedly cheesy kiss scene. Yeah, on the I remember that. The military. So they they've always shied away from that. I think that that might be another reason why people are like, oh, this doesn't belong in Jurassic Park. It's like, well, they've always attempted it, but they never followed through. And they were like, oh, let's not do that. And now uh, that they're following through, people aren't happy about it. Some some of them are. I don't have a problem yeah. with it personally. No, I don't I have think a problem either. No, I mean, I think it's something new. It's not out of the realm of possibility for the characters to do these things in, in these situations. So I don't know. I, I think it's a... I definitely don't think we'll ever hit Transformers level. I don't think um, so at all. I, I, at least I, I really hope not. Uh, no. I, I don't think we'll ever get to that area of where it is nonsensical and, and really crazy to where there's just shit blowing up everywhere and there's... right. You know, the Indo Compi is coming. Oh, he's gonna... man. <laughs> I think as long as the movies emphasize the messages that Jurassic Park has, I think it'll it would stay a smart movie in that regard. Because um look at Jurassic World. Like they mentioned the messages that Jurassic Park had. Like when mm-hmm. Malcolm said, uh before you even knew what you had, you patented it and packaged it and slapped it on a plastic lunchbox and he's you know, you can relate that to the Indominus Rex's creation. Yeah, exactly. That was the whole point. And and I also remember um, Malcolm was saying to, I think, Hammond, like, are you nuts? Do you think just because you own them that you can control them? And they did that with Jurassic World with the Raptors. It's uh, And that's the thing is, like, it is all about control at the end of the day. It's about man being ignorant. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, it's we don't, you know, uh, we don't know shit about these animals. And we, yet we think that we're so godly to you know, do whatever we please with them. It's a cautionary tale. And I think that it's about time that it's been expanded upon. Yeah. Like stick to like, the idea, but expand on the idea. Yeah. I, I, I really think that it's, it's high time that they followed through with what they started. Because in my opinion, I feel like if, if we kept going down the path we were going, we'd just be running in circles and we would become a B movie and 
not good. And that's not know, something I want to see the Jurassic Park series become. Absolutely Me not. neither. Oh, yeah. I love it too much. Yeah, same here. That's why I think this is a good move. I think so. So yeah, that was basically what we think about this new direction for the franchise. Uh, Jeremy, it's been an honor having you do this video. Thank and you. I really appreciate you taking the time to record it. Thank you. Thank you for having me be here today. Now before I go, I'd like to thank my game wardens, as well as my engine executives. I'd also like to thank all my park workers and engine hunters as well. I can't thank you all enough for the support you guys give me, and it seriously means the world to have you all appreciate what I do so much. Now, I'd like to thank you all for watching this video and hope that you all enjoy today's content. If you feel like I deserve it, I'd appreciate the like and hope that you'll consider subscribing if you're interested in hearing from me again. I'll see you all in the next video, guys. And as always, take it easy.